If there's one thing synonymous with Ben-Hur, it's the iconic chariot races. In every cinematic adaptation of the story, three movies and one miniseries, the centerpiece remains the thrilling chariot race between the protagonist, Judah Ben-Hur, and his childhood rival, Masala. The 1959 version, directed by William Wyler, stands out, winning 11 Academy Awards, including Best Picture. With its mammoth production featuring 350 speaking parts and over 50,000 extras, the film remains a timeless masterpiece in the genre of religious drama. However, the passage of time has woven tales of tragedy, heartbreak, and addiction into the lives of the cast. Several members of this cinematic classic have departed over the years, including a legendary star who left us the year following the film's release, in this exploration, we'll delve into their stories. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go, Charlton Heston. One of the most commanding stars of his era, actor Charlton Heston was a man whose presence allowed him to play larger-than-life characters on screen. With his imposing stature and sonorous voice, it did not take long before the stage actor was landing roles on early television and headlining in feature films like the Greatest Show on Earth, 1952. The acclimbed actor who was born, John Charlton Carter, in Evanston, Iliac, became known as much for his politics as his acting in his final decades in public life. A towering figure in Hollywood, Heston defined his show business career portraying iconic and heroic figures, painting masterpieces as Michelangelo, racing chariots in Ben-Hur, and defending the last vestiges of humanity in Planet of the Apes. With his broad 6'3 physique, steely blue eyes, and rich voice, Heston was not destined to play the common man. His movie career took off in 1952 when he starred as a circus manager in The Greatest Show on Earth and catapulted to the upper reaches of stardom four years later when he delivered the Israelites from Egyptian bondage in the Cecil B. DeMille classic The Ten Commandments. As impressive as these early roles were, Heston's performances in the biblical blockbusters The Ten Commandments, 1956, and Ben-Hur, 1959, cemented his stature as a leading man in Hollywood. He continued with a steady output of historical epics and, as the 1960s drew to a close, took part in several science fiction classics, beginning with Planet of the Apes, 1968. In August 2002, Heston announced publicly, with the same bravery that defined his life, that he had a neurological disorder consistent with Alzheimer's disease. There was no denying that Charlton Heston was one of the most influential and prolific actors of 20th century cinema, providing generations of audiences with some of the most memorable big-screen performances of all time. Charlton Heston died at age 84 on Saturday night at his Beverly Hills Calathar, home after a battle with Alzheimer's disease, Jack Hawkins. Best remembered for his numerous portrayals of military men, from the indomitable Major Warden in The Bridge on the River Kwai, 1957, to the officer-turned-criminal mastermind in Basil Dearden's humorous The League of Gentlemen, 1960. Over a period of four decades, beginning with his first appearance on the London stage at the age of 13, the slender, ruggedly handsome and, to American audiences, at least, thoroughly British. Mr. Hawkins appeared in more than 60 plays and nearly as many films. He had a wide variety of roles, but most often he was cast as the solid, responsible British military man or police inspector, a reassuring image of the Royal Air Force, the Army, the Navy, or Scotland Yard at their best. It was early in 1966 that Mr. Hawkins's career appeared to be ended when he was found to have throat cancer, but a year after his larynx had been removed, Mr. Hawkins returned to films. He had learned to speak by using his diaphragm and stomach muscles, which served him sufficiently for delivering brief lines. When longer speaking parts were called for, another actor's voice was dubbed for him. The voice he had lost was a distinctive one, 
a film critic once described him as the actor with a voice like a dinner gong. When he had relearned to speak by gulping in air and burping out the words, he took a characteristically philosophic view of the result. Among his most recent films, in all of which his voice was dubbed, were Nicholas and Alexandra, Young Winston, Waterloo, and Jane Eyre. Mr. Hawkins married twice. He was divorced from his first wife, the actress Jessica Tandy, whom he married in 1932. They had one daughter. He married Doreen Lawrence, a former A.C. Tress, in 1947, and they had two sons and a daughter. In 1958, in recognition of his achievement in the theatrical world, he was made a commander of the Order of the British Empire, Martha Scott. An attractive, accomplished actress, Martha Scott began, her professional career appearing in Shakespearean productions at the 1933-34 Chicago World's Fair. After further honing her craft in stock and on radio, she made her mark as Emily in the 1938 original Broadway production of Thornton Wilder's Pulitzer-winning Our Town. Scott earned a 1940 Best Supporting Actress Oscar nomination for her film debut Recreating the Stage Role. For much of her early feature career, the Missouri native generally playing characters much older than herself, like the titular elderly woman reflecting on her life in Tay Garnett's Cheers for Miss Bishop, or her loyal Parsons wife in One Foot in Heaven, both 1941. Scott delivered a strong portrait of a greedy harridan married to a selfless newspaper editor, John Mills, in So Well Remembered. In The Desperate Hours, she was stalwart as the wife and mother of the family held hostage by Humphrey Bogart. The actress played the mother of Charlton Heston in 250's Biblical Epics, Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments, and William Wyler's Oscar winner Ben-Hur. After an absence of a decade and a half, Scott returned to acting as a nun on board a distressed plane in the schlocky sequel Airport 1975, 1975, and offered an astringent turn as a ballet company manager in Herbert Ross, The Turning Point, Kathy O'Donnell. Though she performed in numerous films that featured top talent both behind and in front of the camera, actress Kathy O'Donnell is best remembered for her first major part in the Academy Award-winning post-World War II drama The Best Years of Our Lives. O'Donnell studied at Oklahoma City University before heading to Hollywood to pursue acting. A chance meeting with an agent led to an introduction to film icon Samuel Goldwyn, who saw something in O'Donnell but felt she needed further training. He sent her to study at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York, urging her to lose her southern accent. After gaining a bit of stage experience, she appeared in the Goldwyn-produced all-star ensemble picture The Best Years of Our Lives as the fiancé of double amputee W22 veteran Harold Russell. Though the film was enormously successful, O'Donnell's subsequent roles didn't make her a star, despite a number of quality pictures. She played opposite Farley Granger in two classic noirs, They Live by Night and Side Street. She supported Kirk Douglas in Detective Story and was Jimmy Stewart's love interest in The Man from Laramie. At the tail end of the 50s, she played her last major film role, as Charlton Heston's sister in the epic Ben-Hur. Scott died on May 28, 2003, in Van Nuys, Los Angeles, aged 90, from natural causes. She was interred next to Powell in the Masonic Cemetery in her native Jamesport, Missouri, Haya Hararit. Gorgeous Israeli actress Haya Hararit may have only stayed in the acting game for a handful of years, but during that brief time, she made a lasting impression. With her striking eyes and fair features, Hararit made her first steps into the spotlight by winning one of the first national Israeli beauty contests. But in 1955, she moved into feature film work, first appearing as Miriam Mizrahi in the romantic adventure Giva 24 Aina Ona, appearing stateside under the translation Hill 24 Doesn't Answer which was the first film project to be shot and produced entirely in her home country. But Harareet's one true brush with cinema greatness came with a role as Esther in the 1959 historical epic Ben-Hur, 
in which she co-starred opposite the revered Charlton Heston. While Hara Reid herself didn't earn any Oscar awards for her performance, virtually everyone else who worked on the project did, including her co-stars Heston and Hugh Griffith, and the film itself was cemented as an instant all-time classic. As it would be for any actor of any caliber, following her role in Ben-Hur wasn't particularly easy. And while the actress continued to find quality roles throughout the early 60s, including co-starring parts in the crime mystery The Secret Partner and the adventure fantasy Journey Beneath the Desert, none were ultimately as memorable. Her last major film role came in the 1964 historical adventure L'Ultima Carica, and in 1967, she branched out by co-writing the screenplay for the BAFTA-nominated 1967 drama Our Mother's House. Haya Hararit died on February 3, 2021, in Buckinghamshire, United Kingdom, at the age of 89. Stephen Boyd Stephen Boyd, an Irish-born actor, passed away in Los Angeles at the age of 48, reportedly due to a heart attack suffered while playing golf. Despite appearing in numerous Hollywood films, Boyd never quite achieved star status. Known for his tall, broad-shouldered stature, dimpled chin, brown curly hair, and hazel green eyes, Boyd took on diverse roles as cowboys, police sleuths, military officers, and various heroes and villains. He shared the screen with stars like Brigitte Bardot, Doris Day, Sophia Loren, and Gina Lolo Brigida. One of his most notable roles was as Masala, Charlton Heston's chariot racing opponent, in the 1959 version of Ben Hur. Boyd's filmography also includes Island in the Sun, The Best of Everything, Fall of the Roman Empire, Fantastic Voyage, Lisa, Jumbo, and The Oscar. In the late 1960s, Boyd ventured into foreign films and, in 1973, established an independent production company based in Hollywood. In his later years, he appeared in several television dramas. He is survived by his wife, Elizabeth, Hugh Griffith. Wild-eyed with a hooked nose and often sporting a pointed beard and mustache, this Welsh character actor turned in a number of flamboyant, hearty performances. Hugh Griffith got a relatively late start. Born in Wales, he worked as a bank clerk until 1939, when he made his stage debut at the age of 27 and entered films the next year with the British-made Neutral Port. Griffith spent the 1940s and 50s slowly building up his film career, making only one U.S. release, So Evil My Love, 1948. He played supporting roles in 20 or so films, including some successes like Kind Hearts and Coronets, 1949, and The Sleeping Tiger, 1954, before scoring his biggest hit in the U.S.-made 1959 remake of Ben-Hur. Playing Sheikh Ilderim, the Rye Chariot mogul, Griffith earned a Best Supporting Actor Oscar. On 14th of May, 1980, Griffith died of a heart attack at his London home. He was 67. Sam Jaffe. Sam Jaffe, a character actor with a long career on Broadway and the silver screen, passed away at the age of 93 on March 24th at his home in Beverly Hills, California. He succumbed to cancer. Jaffe starred as Dr. Zorba in the ABC television series Ben Casey from 1961 to 1965, portraying a circumspect but avuncular brain surgeon who served as an advisor to the young and gifted resident, Dr. Ben Casey, played by Vincent Edwards. The show, depicting the physician's battles against decease and the medical establishment, gained both popular and critical acclaim. Jaffe's second wife, Betty Ackerman, also a regular in the cast, portrayed Dr. Maggie Graham. His film career spanned nearly half a century, starting with his role in Josef von Sternberg's 1934 film Scarlet Empress, alongside Marlene Dietrich. Jaff's last two movies were Nothing Lasts Forever in 1982 and On the Lines, released in the previous year. Notable accolades came for his roles in two 1930s films. In the 1937 version of Lost Horizon, he played a Tibetan mystic and holy man, and in 1939, he portrayed the title role in Gunga Din, 
a modest yet valiant Indian water boy. In 1950, Jaffe won the Venice Film Festival's Best Actor Award and received an Oscar nomination for his portrayal of a criminal genius in John Huston's Asphalt Jungle. Jaffe's talent for playing brilliant scientists was often highlighted by his distinctive hair, a light, curled explosion that led to occasional mistaken identity with Albert Einstein. Besides his acting career, Jaffe displayed linguistic prowess, speaking French, German, Italian, Yiddish, and some Japanese. He was married to Lillian Taze from 1924 until her death in 1941. In 1956, he married Betty Ackerman, who survived him. Finlay Curry Finlay Curry was an actor who made his name working on stage before he moved into feature films in the early 1930s. He was severe and serious in appearance, and his role in the 1946 David Lean adaptation of the Dickens novel Great Expectations as the graveyard-lurking escaped prisoner, Magwitch, was a career best and scary to boot. His ill-tempered characterization served him well with other roles, including his part as Captain Billy Bones in the 1950 Walt Disney version of the pirate adventure Treasure Island and as Queen Victoria's servant in The Mudlark. He worked frequently in historical epics, such as Quo Vadis, Ben-Hur, and Ivanhoe, a good fit for his commanding style. His role in John Schlesinger's British New Wave classic, Billy Liar, as the doddering dull undertaker Duxbury, is small but memorable. In 1966, Curry took on the role of Mr. Lundy, the minister, in the television adaptation of the musical Brigadoon. His final performance was in the television series The Saint, starring Roger Moore. In the two-part episode, Vendetta for the Saint, aired posthumously in 1969, Curry portrayed a dying mafioso boss. During the latter part of his life, Curry transitioned into a highly respected antiques dealer, specializing in coins and precious metals. Along see to his antiquist business, he developed a reputation as a dedicated collector of the works of Robert Burns. Notably, he played the role of a mob boss in an episode of The Saint, marking his concluding performance before his passing at the age of 90, Frank Thring. Frank Thring was an actor with a successful Hollywood career. His early roles included appearances in films like The Vikings, 1958, alongside Kirk Douglas, the epic Ben-Hur, 1959, with Charlton Heston, and El Cid, 1961, also featuring Charlton Heston. Off-screen, Thring was known for his flamboyant and often waspish persona. He appeared in numerous TV commercials and guest starred on popular weekly series, variety programs, and quiz shows. He was often seen in black funereal attire and other sinister costumes, with the interior of his house featured in an Australian TV program, showcasing walls painted black. However, his acting career faced interruptions due to bouts of alcoholism and periods of ill health. In 1982, Thring was appointed the King of Mumba, and he looked majestic in his regal garb while riding on a thespian-inspired float. Thring was briefly married to actress Joan Cunliffe in the 1950s, a marriage that ended in divorce. Although openly gay, Thring desired children and was distressed when his marriage ended without issue. Frank Thring passed away in 1994 from esophageal cancer at the age of 68, he was cremated, and his ashes were scattered off the coast of Queenscliff, Victoria. A celebration of his life took place at the Victorian Arts Center, Melbourne, in 1995. Terence Longden Terence Longden was best known for his lead role in the 1950s-1960s British TV series Gary Halliday, where he portrayed a pilot reminiscent of Biggles, engaging in various adventurous situations. Additionally, he gained recognition for character actor roles in British television productions such as The Sandbaggers, Danger Man, and The Avengers. In film, Longden played Drusus, Masala's personal aide, in the movie Ben-Hur. He had a significant supporting role in the 1958 film Another Time, Another Place, starring alongside Sean Connery and Lana Turner. 
Longden also appeared in four early carry-on films and took occasional leading roles, notably in the tense B-movie thriller Clash by Night, 1963. Terence Longden resided on the border of Gloucestershire and Warwickshire until his passing. He succumbed to cancer on April 23, 2011, at the age of 88. Cecil André Mesritz Cecil André Mesritz, professionally known as André Morel, 20 August 1909, 28 November 1978, was an English actor with a prolific career spanning theater, film, and television from the 1930s to the 1970s. Notably, he portrayed Professor Bernard Quatermass in the BBC television serial Quatermass and the Pit, 1958-59, and took on the role of Dr. Watson in Hammer Film Productions, adaptation of The Hound of the Baskervilles, 1959. Morell's film credits include appearances in notable productions such as The Bridge on the River Kwai, 1957, and Ben-Hur, 1959. Throughout the 1960s, he featured in several of Hammer's horror films and played a role in the acclaimed ITV historical drama The Caesars, 1968. His obituary in the Times newspaper described him as having a commanding presence with a rich, responsive voice. Whether in classical or modern theater, Morell was recognized as authoritative and dependable. Sadly, Morell, who smoked up to 60 cigarettes a day until he gave up in 1976, died from lung cancer in London on 28th November 1978, at the age of 69. The George Relf Relf embarked on his acting journey in 1911 leaving an indelible mark with appearances in over 60 films and numerous stage productions. His talent shone in the plays of George Bernard Shaw, earning him critical acclaim. Collaborating closely with British playwright Noel Coward, Ralph featured in several of Coward's productions. Beyond his successful acting career, Ralph valiantly served in World War I, receiving two medals for bravery despite being wounded twice. Later in life, he grappled with Parkinson's disease, leading to his retirement from acting. Despite this, he remained engaged in the industry and served as a judge for the Miss World competition from 1954 to 1958. He died of natural cause on April 24, 1960, in Chelsea, London, England, UK.